Hey everybody, Super Ty, comic book Brando. <laughs> almost, almost had a, a moment there. Um, so uh, this is the weekly video that we do every Tuesday. Going to talk about all the. Sorry, that really threw me off. Uh, Going to be talking about all the cool. <laughs> this is, we're just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, we're just chilling. Uh, talk about all the cool comics that are coming out tomorrow, which is September fifth. I want to say that everybody who came by for the Labor Day sale, thank you very much. We had a blast. I know I was a little worn out from it. It's crazy good time. Crazy good time. Uh, a lot of really fun days. I know I spent way too much money. I bought a lot of things that I've been looking after, uh, looking for, especially the first appearance of Animal Vegetable Mineral Man, which I was very stoked about. Huzzah. Uh, and uh, as usual, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything you want to talk about, you know, comic-wise, or you know, just what's going on with your day, give us a holler. Talk right there. We'll so talk back. With this thing, we usually talk about as many comics as we can fit into about half an hour, but mm -hmm. there are plenty more coming out this week. You yeah. can see them all listed on our pool checklist on austinbooks.com. Plus, you can reserve the ones you want. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Uh, Brad is watching. Hey, Brad. <laughs> uh, We're watching you watch us. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with the first of the Sandman Universe books, The Dreaming, written by Cy Spurrier. So, uh, and drawn by Bilkis Ever Everly. I'm sorry, it's reading upside down. So, something's wrong in the dreaming. Uh, Morpheus, or Daniel, which is the new Sandman, he's, he's gone. He just decided to leave one day, and so it's all kind of falling apart. And there's these weird, kind of formless beings that are just showing up, and they don't really have a, you know, thoughts or will of their own. They're just kind of hanging out there, so we're trying to figure out what's going on with them. Uh, really awesome book. I like Seisberger a whole lot. He can do very cool, weird books. So uh, I really dig it, and I want to see what happens next with it because there's uh, a lot of ominous threats happening. So less. Yo, guys, how's your Labor Day weekend? It was great. I was here. This is exhausting. Yeah. But it was a good high energy. Mm -hmm. So still recuperating. <clears throat> Cover. This is the new series by Brian Michael Bendis and David Mack, longtime creative team. They, I think, first worked together back on Daredevil, a uh, little three issue story mm -hmm. with Leapfrog. Oh, yeah. Really, really amazing stuff. Early in uh, Bendis's rise to, to power. So they're doing a new series for DC about a comic writer, or I'm sorry, a comic artist who. Um, in this issue is approached by a woman, a very intriguing woman, who has ties to uh, the CIA. Mm. She's a spy. Uh, what does this mean for this comic book artist? Is he about to be recruited? What's going on? Beautiful book, very interesting look at uh, sort of the, it's like a cross between like a Comic Con culture and uh, uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Mm. Chuck Barris book and movie. Awesome stuff, beautiful art. David Mack is always a favorite. Bendis does dialogue fantastically, and this feels like classic Bendis. So give this one a read, try this one out, and let me know what you think. Uh, Brad says uh, cover is a definite must read for him. Agreed. Brad is the one who uh, directed me towards Brian Michael Bendis. Oh, really? Low those many years ago. Wow. He's like, yeah, there's some. Uh, some dude named Brian Bendis from Cleveland who writes this comic called Powers. Check it out. Nice. Yeah, I've been loving all the Jinx World stuff. I've been thinking it's been great all, all throughout. My next one is Justice League number seven. This is kind of tying up all the story arc that has happened so far. So uh, there's been a lot that's happened. You know, not only is there a speed force, but there's also a still force, like an entropic force that is just keeping the universe from growing. And they have to figure out a way to stop that from happening. Also, a lot of planets are charging up to uh, destroy Earth. Also, Joker's around. Also, like, there's just a ton of things happening in this. And Scott Snyder really does a great way of just tying all that up, but leaving room for what's going to happen next. Uh, is it a happy ending? Is it kind of a devastating ending? Well, you'll find out when you read it. The Immortal Hulk number five. Al Ewing is writing one of our favorite Marvel yeah. books right now. It's the Hulk as a horror story, a superhero story, it's got a little bit of both. Um, in this issue we have a confrontation between uh, Hulk and Walter Lankowski, the Sasquatch of uh, Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight. <laughs> I was like, Task Force X, I'm like, that is Suicide Squad, what am I thinking? <laughs> of Alpha Flight fame. Um, 
Something weird is going on with old Walt, though, and uh, he's, he's about to go a little bit monstrous mm. uh, in the middle of a hospital. Things are going to get devastating, and there are some big, so scary surprises in this issue. So give this one a read. Hulk has been really good, and that is not often the case, but when Hulk is good, it's great. So there you go. I like the, the uh, you know, kind of backstory of all this is every Gamma, you know, irradiated person in the Marvel Universe, there's like some weird dark force that's connecting them all, like gamma radiation is like sentient almost. Love this stuff. Yeah, there, there's some answers. Oh, cool, really? Related yeah. In, in that issue. I've been wanting to read this. It's uh, pretty issue. intense all and day. shocking. Uh, Angel says, What's up, fellas? What's up, Angel? And Angelique says, Hello, y'all. Hello, y'all. Hello. My next one is one of my personal favorites. It's The Adventures of the Super Sons. It's just a pure, fun, crazy book. Uh, in the last issue, we saw a tiny Legion of Doom, all kids. So there's like a Joker Jr. and Rex Luthor and all this other stuff. You kind of find out where these guys come from, and it's not what you're expecting. Uh, they come from the Mojoverse. <laughs> that'd be great if that actually <laughs> happened. But uh, you, you figure out where they're from and uh, what their kind of plans are, their overall reaching plans. Uh, but one, they might have a traitor in the mist that, you know, kind of wants to help the Super Sons happening. Ew. And it's also not who you expect. I thought this was great. I love it. If you have any kids that like superhero books, this is a perfect one for them. I love it. It's awesome. Brad, couldn't agree with us more about the Hulk right now. Yeah. It is so good. I love Al Ewing comics. Beautiful art, too. I didn't really talk up the art, but Joe Bennett... Uh, Oh yeah, he does really good stuff. Just adds a whole lot of personality, just the way that he draws Walter uh, uh, Lankowski and, he, and even Bruce Banner too, because Banner showed up at the end of the last issue, uh, even though we haven't really seen too much of him recently. Jose says, thanks, you're welcome. <laughs> Anytime, Jose. Uh, Leviathan, number two. This is the new one from Layman and Patara. I love this book. This is crazy kaiju gone. Berserk. Yeah, a little, it's really fun. A little bit satanic, a little bit um, over the top, 90s um, militant. Yeah. Uh, we see in this issue uh, the, the American Task Force response team to this situation is, a, is more than a little over the top. Nice. Also, dinosaurs. What's going on in this book? Dinosaurs. Absolutely love it. Beautifully drawn. Katara throws in just lots of neat little references that I won't give away, but you can just look at all the details in every every page and just see all sorts of cool stuff. So, Leviathan. If you're not already reading it, get the first issue and get the second tomorrow. Avengers number seven, the origin of the prehistoric Ghost Rider. Mm. So, <laughs> it's pretty darn wacky. Uh, like about this little caveman this little boy who's you know living in a cave and he's the smartest person in his like clan and somebody comes in and murders his entire clan and it's very surprising when you find out who it is but he's seeking vengeance and you know what's the best thing for vengeance becoming a ghost rider uh and a giant woolly mammoth is his ride which i thought was great <laughs> that's pretty great because it's always on fire uh there's a really funny moment where it also spews fire out of its trunk which i thought was excellent um jason aaron doing an amazing job at Marvel all the time. Uh, this is just like a little, you know, segue story for the big overreaching story arc that he's doing with all the Avengers. Uh, I had a very interesting talk with a friend about the Avengers book and I was just like, yeah, it's all right. It's, and then I reread all the issues and I was like, no, wait, I was wrong. This is great. It's all <laughs> awesome. Yeah, because I was looking at it through the wrong lens. I was, you know, for the past 15 years, the Avengers have been more serious, more dark, more, you know, internal and but the world is ending yeah we stop it but this avengers run is more like 70s avengers with like cosmic craziness and like coming together stick to itiveness you know i've been loving it like i'm just looking at it through the wrong lens right on yeah let's see flaming mammoth souls Soul. correct Saul says leviathan's a fun book great art yeah I can't wait for Jason Aaron on Conan. Oh yeah, yeah. he's doing Conan. That's, That's gonna be great. Some awesome news there. Yeah, I am all about that. I mean, if you, I can't even imagine a better person to write yeah. Conan. Most definitely. So good. Uh, did they announce an artist on that? Um, I know Assad Ribic is doing the covers. That's I, pretty good. I can't remember who's doing the uh, interiors, unfortunately. It'd be nice to be like into Conan again. I was reading yeah. some back issues just the other day, and like, oh man, these are so sweet. What? Where's Conan at? Yeah. I remembered all the good news. 
McLean says, good afternoon. Good to see you during the sale, McLean. Yeah, good uh, Good after rainy noon. <laughs> yeah, rainy, rainy noon. Cosmic Ghost Rider number three. Talk about over the top. This book takes over the top to a whole new over the top dimension. Yeah. One where Sylvester Stallone reigns supreme and you turn your hat backwards. That's an over the top reference. Oh yeah. <clears throat> For those of you who didn't know. So, Cosmic Ghost Rider has uh, taken baby Thanos and is determined to spare him a life of violence. Uh, he is the wrong guy for that job. Absolutely. And especially gets kind of crazy when Cable brings a whole new team of familiar heroes. Yes, that is a jugger duck. Yes. Uh, to, to stop this from happening. Crazy, offensive, violent, super fun this is a blast i hope you enjoy this book as much as i do it is absolutely the kind of thing that in the past i would just be snub my nose at like this is this is dumb um, <laughs> no it's awesome it's fun it's ridiculous and it is exactly the kind of thing that keeps you from taking this all too seriously now for something really serious, Death of the Inhumans, <laughs> number three. Also by Donnie. Also Kings. by Donnie. Uh, so in the last issue, you saw something pretty bad happen to Black Bolt. It was uh, very rough, and I was like, what's going to happen next? Well, this is what happens next. Uh, should I tell him what happens, or? I don't know. No, nah, I won't. <laughs> Anyways, it's something that would uh, essentially nullify Black Bolt. And... But he's not quite all the way depowered. He's just got a little bit left in there. I mean, you see a lot of characters showing up that you haven't seen in forever. Uh, you see uh, a certain Kree that has been missing for a while. Uh, dark, sad, but ultimately really great. Uh, I really like that Donnie can switch from like, hey, cool craziness, to like, this is one of the most somber things you're going to read, but you still are just like so into it. Uh, Artwork's very solid. You can feel the emotion just ripping out of people on this. Ah, oh, man. It's rough. And also one of the best last pages I've seen in a comic in a while. Because <laughs> I was just like, no way. It's like your life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at that page, like, hey, there's Ty. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Brad's loving Donnie Cates' work at uh, Marvel right now. His Guardians of the Galaxy should be just as fun as his Cosmic Ghost Rider. Yeah, that was just announced. That was it just announced, I think, yesterday. Yeah, Hashtag yesterday morning. Who is the Guardians? Yeah. Um, one of these books, either Cosmic Ghost Rider or the Thanos one I'll be talking about shortly, has a big double page spread. I saw that double page spread. It might be in other Marvel books, and too. I, and I saw, like, a character that... I haven't seen in a long time, and I would love to see him in a book again. There's a lot of really interesting characters in yeah. there, and I'd love to see them all be a part of the Guardians. We'll dish about it after the video. Ooh. Dish. No dish. <laughs> Let's dish about Guardians. Yeah. Hashtag dishing on Guardians. Batman number 54, Shadows of the Past. We're going to be looking at current day uh, Nightwing as he's trying to pull Batman out of this funk he's been in since mm -hmm. he got basically left at the altar. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to see a little bit of the, the unseen history of uh, Dick Grayson's younger days immediately after being taken in as a ward by Bruce Wayne. So uh, we're going to see a couple different time periods, their history, uh, reflecting back on, uh, on the relationship between these two crime fighters. Leading into things. Oh, okay. Yeah. So be sure to pick this one up. This will be uh, this will be one that you want to to revisit. As Guardians of the Galaxy. So uh, a lot of really cool characters are showing up in this, and uh, one of my favorites, Throg. He is in there. Uh, <laughs> it's a very fun kind of like silly book. Uh, it starts off with this girl who is kind of like old school um, Donald Blake and Thor, but she's with. Valkyrie, so they share a body. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, but they need this. Well, I mean, that was like Valkyrie's always thing. Her, was it? Thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, it was back and forth between. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't. I did not know. Uh, but she's this archaeologist, and Angelo shows up and says, "Hey, we need your help looking at this thing." And they teleport immediately into a giant battlefield with almost all the aliens possible and the executioner fighting everybody. Really fun, like just 
Rock'em Sock'em kind of book. Uh, this isn't a spoiler, but Throg is actually considered like the big gun in this, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. I was like, I mean, yes. He's got like Thor power. Yeah. That makes sense. And it's awesome. Uh, I was just like, yes, Throg. This is great. I, I love, you know, sillier characters, but like, yeah, he just like tears yeah. through everybody and wow. it's yeah it's great so uh if you if you want something a little more light-hearted cosmic adventure kind of thing this is it also has a character that is once again not been seen in comics recently uh becoming the big bad which i was very very happy about it was pretty cool so is throg like actual thor frog from like another dimension so or something they give him a little uh backstory his name is simon walterson okay so he's not He's not actually Thor. Uh, so, Simon, you know, based off of Walt Simonson, obviously. Hmm. Sim, Simon Walterson was a guy who was heartbroken, his wife died, and he, like, asks a wizard to turn him into a frog, and that's when Loki turned Thor into a frog. They became kind of friends, and then, like, a little bit of Mjolnir fell off, and he was worthy <laughs> enough to pick up that little bit, and so became a tiny frog, Thor. <laughs> History. There you go. There you go. Thanos Legacy number one. If you are a big fan of that Thanos annual that came back, came out not too long ago, you'll want to check this out. This is a uh, uh, two stories, mm. and we've got uh, Donnie doing a story with like kind of looking, following events that have recently occurred to Thanos, mm -hmm. um, what that means for like how he. Even, it's really hard not to spoil so this book. so hard not to spoil this one. Um, basically, just post his storyline, uh, uh, the Th uh, Thanos wins storyline, post the beginning of Infinity War. Yeah. Um, but you got some Cosmic Ghost Rider in there mm -hmm. and a strange new setup for something that is going to be happening uh, with another character that I won't mention. And then you have another story that looks back at Thanos and uh, uh, Gamora. So, really good stuff. I really, really love what they're doing with, with Thanos, with the cosmic stuff. And, uh, man, it's been just a must-read from Marvel. So, give this one a shot. Walking Dead number 183. So, there's this really nice town. And uh, they have concerts, they have football, they have, like, a genuine society. It's a little messed up kind of messi uh, <laughs> society. Society. <laughs> Sorry, society. And um, the cracks are starting to show a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, like, no society is perfect. Even, you know, one of the best looking ones in the end of a zombie apocalypse. So Michonne is kind of just stuck in there. The title of the story is called And Michonne Without Her Sword. Uh, things are starting to unravel a little bit. It's, uh, I kind of, I want to see what happens, but like, you're almost like, ah, oh, man, there's almost a happy, <laughs> they were so close. There was almost having a happy thing, but you know, Kirkman snatches that away. It makes a boring comic. So. Yes, it does. So fun, you know, exciting thing. So like some, some big things are about to be happening. Also the trade for walking dead, uh, volume 30 is coming out tomorrow as well. So oh. if you're a trade waiter, uh, that's coming out tomorrow as well. Trade and, uh, waiter. Well, people wait on trades, that's Your fine. Your trades, sir. Uh, also, Monstrous Volume 3. I totally forgot to grab that. Monstrous Volume 3 is coming out tomorrow as well. All sorts of good stuff coming out Sorry. tomorrow. See, we can only do so much. We... <laughs> Thank you, Cruz. Messiety. Yeah. <laughs> Messiety. Unnatural, Issue 3. I had to grab the non-booby cover. Uh, this book, I never expected I would still be reading it. Yep. Never in a million years. It is so good. As the second I saw like anthropomorphic people, it's like, uh, nope, nope, nope. I tried the first one and it's actually really good and it's gotten more and more intriguing with every issue. It's really good. It's like you've got, uh, you know, some, some personal drama set in this world where you have to, you're expected to be with beings of your own species uh, and everything's very rigid, but uh, she, Leslie attempts to do that to go along with the program and things go very very bad shockingly bad I have my jaw like hit the floor at the oh, last page so crazy good book I never thought following this this sort of punk rock pig girl would be my kind of thing but I can't recommend it enough it's yeah. beautifully drawn really good stuff this will be one of the best books of the year yeah 
and the world building alone, like the rules that they set up, ah, it's so good. It's so good. I've never even, I, I don't even know Mirka and Dolfo, what she did before this, if she did anything before this. I know she's an Italian artist, mm -hmm. uh, and there's usually like a little blurb in every issue about the issue and her, but uh, fascinating stuff. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Snot Girl, number 11, came out. It's been a little while. There's been like a little bit of a delay between these, but it's always worth the wait. So, Snot Girl, <laughs> I'm sorry, Lottie, uh, that's her name. I just like calling her Snot Girl. Uh, <laughs> the she, Adventures of Snot Girl. She is um, about to have a second date. You know, she there's this person that she's been wanting to date, and things just keep on getting in the way, but she's finally getting a second date. But of course, not everything works out as planned. Never does. So you get to see some of that little trials and tribulation. You also get to see a little peek into the subconscious of some of these characters. You get to see motivations. You get to see, I don't know, not out, what, what's the word I'm looking for? You get to see motives. There we go. There motives. Go. Good word. Yeah. So very awesome book. Brian Lee O'Malley's killing it. Leslie Hung's art is awesome. Check it out. We're going to see why Wari is a zillion years old in Paper Girls number 24. We're going to get some explanations about her, her son, and maybe we'll get uh, some, some diagnosis mm. for a, a, a troubled member of the quartet. Uh, awesome book, beautiful art, Cliff Chang, every issue just really uh, does amazing work. Fun read, weird read. Never know what's coming. I, I will be with this series until the very end, and I'll still not know <laughs> what to expect from it. So check this out. This is a good one. Uh, again, get caught up on the trades. There's four of them at this point. Yeah. A lot of fun. Well, McLean says that he loves that series. Yeah, McLean uh, got turned on to the series from our discussing it. Nice. So, and he came right in and picked up the first volume and just. I think you got to like all the, the rest of them the next time you came. Yeah. And Angelique says, Yahoo for Paper Girls. Yahoo. I say Google for Paper Girls. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. I'm sorry. Really awful. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, speaking of another series that I wasn't sure I'd actually like at all, this is a fantastic book called Vampironica. Like, uh, you know, like vampire books I'm kind of fan about. Uh, but like reading this, it is so good. I've been loving all the horror stories that Archie Comics are doing. Afterlife, Sabrina, Jughead the Hunger. This one, it's awesome. It's written by Greg Smallwood and, well, written and drawn. It's the team of Greg and Meg Smallwood. Uh, you might remember him from Moon Knight, the Jeff Lemire series that happened not too long ago. Uh, so... Veronica, she's she wants to make everything back the way it was, and in order to do that, she has to kill the vampire that <laughs> turned her in the first place. Uh, his name's Ivan. He's an sob, uh, but you know people are starting to notice that. Uh oh, there's there's people missing in you know Riverdale. Like more and more people are going missing, and uh, but they're kind of not preoccupied with that because there's this big party that's going to be happening, uh, which I'm sure is going to be a massacre that happens later on. Who knows? But yeah, I love it. The artwork's gorgeous. Great the art, story's yeah. really fun. Yeah, I'm just liking all the horror stuff that Archie's doing. It's fun. It's very different. Yeah. I, you know, it's sort of like a, it's a Riverdale world now. For, yeah. For the inhabitants of Riverdale. Mm. And uh, we're going to see different sides of these characters that have been around since 1940. Yeah. Stray Bullets, number 38. So this is a crazy one following like a... Man, so you know, I mean, you know immediately that uh, Ginny is having like these weird hallucinations or, or some kind of weird daydream. You don't know what's going on though. You don't know what's bringing these on. There's characters that have shown up at, at like different ages that then she's known them. Mm -hmm. um, very surreal, very crazy. Uh, we're getting to see some antagonistic Amy race car uh, stuff going on. If you've been following the series, this will make a lot more sense uh, even though it's like just like a, a waking dream kind of like just flow of consciousness and you're seeing characters similar to the real ones hard to explain crazy book um, kind of sets up a big scary thing happening next that I don't know what's gonna happen so, mm. good stuff one of my favorites get caught up a lot of catching up to do 
Don't get me wrong, but I'm always going to push straight bullets. Uh, X-Men Red, the first volume came out, and I dare say this is the best X-Men book that is going on. It's a different kind of team. It's a different way they're trying to save the world. It's not punching robots or, you know, big, you know, Magneto fights. It's really essentially trying to teach people not to hate anymore. Hmm. And it's really good. Classic villain shows up from Grant Morrison's run. Uh, different kinds of... Different members show up, like, you know, Honey Badger's in there, and she's amazing. Uh, of course, you got X-23, Nightcrawler, uh, Gambit shows up for a little bit, uh, but also, like, Namor's there. There's uh, that character, Gentle, if you remember him? Mm -hmm. I was from, like, Academy X. He's this guy who can, like, grow really big and strong, but it, like, causes him a lot of physical pain, so he can't maintain it too long. Uh, but really great stuff in here. There's also a uh, friendly sentinel that is their form of transportation. He has a big rainbow on his chest. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm loving this. Uh, it's so good. Yeah. This is the best X-Men book going on, in my opinion. Oh, right now. snap. Yeah. Harley Quinn, number 49. So, Harley is out to kill Lord Deathman. But Lord Deathman is a really hard guy to kill. Mm. Uh, it's in his name. So... Uh, yeah, how do you kill someone who's a master of death? And men, and lords. Well, you're gonna have to get tricky, and Harley's really good at that. Plus, this issue ends with a setup, with a character I never thought I'd see in DC again. Oh, I gotta see this now. I, and I saw it coming too, like a couple pages in, I'm like, is that? No. Oh, I think it is. You get to the last page, and it is. Very happy to see. <laughs> Sweet. If you're an old school DC fan, you will smile. So I'm very excited about that upcoming storyline. And this was a fun one too. So give it a read. The Further Adventures of Nick Wilson. This guy, uh, he was the world's only superhero. And he was having a great time. And then one day his powers just stopped. And now he just kind of sits at his apartment, watches TV, gets stoned. Uh, you know, kind of not living the dream he used to live. Until one day, his old arch enemy, arch en enemy, nemesis, I'm trying to combine words. Bad guy. Bad guy, who's kind of like a Lex Luthor analog, he says, hey, why don't we make a Nick Wilson museum? And of course, there has to be ulterior motives and all that other stuff. <laughs> uh, one thing I really like, well, I'm not going to tell you what I really liked about it because it would kind of give away some stuff. But it's self-referential humor, which I really dig in comics a whole lot. It's, you know, I liked also seeing, you know, how far can a hero fall? How do they scrap them, you know, scrap their way back up kind of thing? I've been digging it. Nice. The Fix, Volume 3, Deal of Fortune. Um, so we've got Roy and Mac, a couple dirt bags. They've got some scores. They've got some plans. They've got a dog named Pretzel. Yeah. Um, and things are looking really kind of sketchy and iffy. But Roy's got this figured out, right? Right? Maybe. Maybe not. Um, I love the fix. It's a great sort of heist crime, uh, sort of Hollywood, um, just debaucherous romp. Um, a lot of chaos, a lot of carnage, unnecessary uh, violence, but fun too. So I don't know how to better sell that book than through that. If you're not reading the fix, come get the first volume and let me know what you think. It reminds me of, uh, like, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang a little bit. Yeah, there definitely is that sort of same, you That know, kind of crime story, you know. Smirky sense of humor, um, a little bit like a comic out a few years ago called The Blue State. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's really good, and, but with a more consistent kind of feel to it than that. Uh, Detective Comics number seven, or volume seven, uh, Batman, Batman Eternal. Man, I'm having a rough day. <laughs> so... It's all leading up to this. This is the end of James Tinian IV's epic that's been happening with Detective Comics. Batwoman, straight up, killed Clayface. Not great. Uh, team swallowing apart. Some people are actually on Batwoman's side. So, you know, sides are being chosen. And it's kind of just, you know, like, what are we gonna do? You know, she straight up killed a dude. You can't really be in the Bat family with that kind of thing. So, a little bit of a trial feel here, a little bit of a, you know, fruition of stories. There's also, uh, somebody is trying to term, uh, turn Tim Drake into a mechanical monster, is the best way to put it. You were commenting that, man, DC Universe just really 
you know, dumps on Tim Drake a whole lot, and a lot of that happens in here. Uh, but is it going to be a happy ending? Is it going to be a sad ending? Find out. <laughs> I have more to say about that later. Oh, okay. <laughs> Batman. Little dish. The dark dishing on Drake. <laughs> Hashtag. Batman, The Dark Knight, Master Race, the latest from Frank Miller with Eduardo, Re or, I'm sorry, with Brian Azzarello and art by Andy Kubert. Um, gorgeous book, the third chapter of The Dark Knight Returns sort of storyline. We get to see uh, later on in that world, um, more heroes, more things going on. Uh, hard to talk about. Uh, fantastic book. I like this a lot more than Dark Knight Strikes Back because you get a little bit of balance with the different creative vision. Um, that's a nice way of saying, we're reining you in a little bit, Frank. Yeah. We're kind of bringing it in, yep. making it more, feel more like the Batman book we want. Um, awesome stuff. Give this a read. It's now available in soft cover. It was only hardcover before, but now you can get the nice trade paperback. So there Does it, it have the mini comics in there too? I mean, it should. It, I do believe it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I saw it. I saw, some, there. I saw some Frank Miller artwork in there. Yep. Cool. Twisted Romance. This is not, you know, this is not your mama's and your papa's uh, romance kind of books. There's some weird stuff that happens in here, like demons in a 70s discotheque. A, uh, Sounds exactly like my mom and papa's <laughs> romance book. Uh, A princess that runs away with the dragon instead of the prince. All these kind of things. And it lives up to its name. It's There are some lovely romances happening in here, but it's just a little bit different than what you're thinking. You know, the knob is turned just a little bit to 11 in the weird factor. You could say it's tweaked. Yes. Uh, very fun. A lot of different art styles happening in here. A lot of different essays and short stories as well. Yeah. It was really fun it was very popular in single issues and sold out pretty fast and a lot of people were asking about like when is this coming out well it's coming out tomorrow it's here yeah teenage mutant ninja turtles ultimate collection volume three also previously available only as a hardcover now there's a nice soft cover edition that covers uh, the original tmnt number 12 14 15 17 and 19 through 21 hmm. basically for the, the the stories the way they're kind of laid out there gotcha sometimes it'll be like a run sometimes it's a solo issue uh we got stuff from kevin eastman and peter laird but also collaborators eric talbot and jim lawson were in here as well uh, does this include the it does not okay great stuff though a lot of fun um turtles at their classic best the book was way better than you even remember it being your memory is somewhat tainted by the cartoon and Cowabunga Dude. The original black and white comic, pretty smart, very clever. Mean. Had a lot to say. Very intense violence, too. Yeah. So, there you go. My last one, as usual, is the sidekick special of the week. We were talking about Brian K. Vaughn with Paper Girls. Well, did you know he wrote Mystique back in the day? I did. I have every uh, issue. Yeah. So, uh, this is the first collection of it. It's, uh, you know, she's like the agent of Xavier. Yeah. She is just there. And they do some really interesting things with her power sets, you know? They kind of change up, like, you know, she can... Why, why wouldn't she grow extra eyes if she needed them? Because, you know, you can. So, uh, I've always thought that was pretty cool. Uh, usually twenty four ninety nine. This is going for eight bones. Nice. Yeah, I'm really stoked about it. It's very solid work by Brian K. Vaughn's first 13 issues of this series. So, Good yeah. Good read, a lot of fun spy fi stuff. Yeah, I digs it. How handy is it to have a spy that could change shape? Yeah, I would love that ability. So, let's talk about what's going on. We actually do have more happening this week. We have, uh, even after the very fun and taxing uh, Labor Day sale, <laughs> uh, we have Staple this weekend. That is this weekend. Staple is the 8th and the 9th, this Saturday and Sunday, but with every Staple, we are also doing our Staple pre-party. Uh, that is going to be Saturday from, Friday. sorry, Friday. Uh, come on by. All the artists and writers, they come and hang out. Our guest, Jin Wang, is going to be here from Prince and the Dressmaker. That same night, we're also having... What time does that start? Uh... Start seven, you know, Chris was saying eight in his emails, but we're just going to start at seven, you know, let people trickle in. Right on. Uh, but also, we're having the art show next door at Guzu. Boston Hardcore. Yeah, it's all based on uh, Boston Terriers and very crazy situations. I got to see some of the artwork. It looks very cool. We've been posting some teasers over on the Guzu Gallery Facebook page. Yeah, one of some them, awesome very nice. Stuff. 
Um, Thank you guys. More indies if possible. Have a nice one, please. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll we'll talk some more indies. I'll try to throw some in there. Yeah, we try to if throw. If there's it. certain stuff you want us to talk about, let me know. Yeah, most definitely. Leave it in the comments. We'll talk about it. So the art show is from seven to ten. Also, both events are free to you know come in and join. Have a couple of drinks. Drink responsibly. We'll enforce that. We'll make sure that everybody drinks responsibly. Uh, we definitely enforce it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that's pretty much what we got going on here. What about you? Uh, there's a new D&D &D group starting up next Tuesday, but tonight over on the Outlaw Moon Games Facebook page, we'll be doing some character creation with some folks that weren't able to be here last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll do that. I'm having fun like taking questions from the folks watching and then commenting and what have you. So I'm taking a nice backseat nice observer kind of like a uh, uh, moderator type a grand dungeon master <laughs> no, I'm just the guy but... who talks about what people are talking about in the chat oh, okay uh, but we were having fun talking about them making characters last Tuesday so we'll do that again this Tuesday and then next Tuesday the whole group will be starting their adventure cool yeah you got anything else going on um, well there is the Saturday prize tag yes there is thank you for reminding me <laughs> prize tent everybody was shopping with us during the sale got a lot of tickets we handed out a ton of them mm -hmm. and what we do set up a tent out front it's filled with merchandise a couple of comics posters uh like lithographs a whole lot of stuff and it's kind of like an arcade where it's just like one ticket two ticket three tickets kind of stuff just just bring those tickets back and redeem them for free stuff yeah it's our way of saying thank you for shopping with us just you know and I'm back and get stuff. There are Funko Pops, there uh -huh. are plushes, yep. there are some comics, there are toys, there are big toys. There's lots of all sorts of neat stuff. I always see people grabbing like really cool things and uh, we just add more to it like every time. Yeah. So. Let's hope the weather is nice. Mm, no more rain. Yeah, that'd be I mean, rain, just not Saturday. Rain That's at, fine. Rain at night. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Well, cool. I really don't have anything going on this week. I got some shows coming up in the middle of September, but nothing right now. Thank goodness I've been playing almost every weekend, so I, I get to chill out. A little bit of a break. Yeah. Um, I watched that movie Tag last night. It was awesome. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was it really good. good. Like, I was uh, guffawing the entire time. So Guffaws yeah. are good. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, I guess that does it for us. Uh, you can follow me at Super Tight Denton 1. You can follow you at Comic Book Brando. You can follow both of us at Austin Books, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. A lot of cool stuff coming out, yo. 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 Comics. Dish. <laughs>